In this video experience, we have tried to duplicate the classroom environment as best we can. Handouts in PDF form and exercises are downloaded from Crane's website and can be used while playing the video content in another window. Each lesson is hyperlinked from the tables of content, allowing one to find their place through the more than 24 and a half hours of slides. Each slide is hyperlinked within the video, allowing one to skip to or to replay any slide of interest. To mimic the interactive components of the classroom, I will at times invite you to pause the video using the button in the bottom left of the console to consider an answer to the question I've asked regarding your interpretation of what you see on the slide. You can then use the play button to hear my interpretation. We will also not hide some of the missteps that I will make during the class, hopefully providing a more natural feel to the environment. We have been pleased with comments from former students who appreciate witnessing the kinds of mistakes that can be made by someone who has been using XSLT for a long time. I often misremember the names of functions and sometimes the arguments required for them at the point that I'm writing the style sheet. I often mistype my XML syntax. Students have found that by watching me make a mistake, receive and interpret the error message from the processor, fix the error and rerun the process helps them understand the steps they have to take. The handouts and hands-on exercises are available under password access from Crane's website on the video sale page. The password to that page is delivered as part of the receipt of payment for the product and the available information should be obtained promptly before the password expires. If you have legitimate use of the product and you need a new copy of the password to that page, you can request this at any time. Note that legitimate users also have access to a copy of the PDF book from which these materials are derived, and as any other customer of the book, Access to all future editions of the complete book is included in the video purchase. The update notifications are sent automatically to the email address associated with the video purchase. Please respect our copyright by not making copies of the PDF files, exercises, or video content. Of course, you can make backup copies, but as with the copyright of any other commercial video product, you are asked to share only the physical media itself and copies of the exercises and handouts to those who use the physical media. Please do not post electronic copies of these materials for unrestricted access in either a public location or an intranet. This material is an actual delivery of the instructor-led training that we offer as a service from Crane. We have had the privilege to deliver this material around the world and we would welcome the opportunity to make this material available to you and your colleagues depending on our availability. Note that we also license these training materials to training organizations around the world. Please contact us if you have questions in this regard. Module 1 overviews the context of how we use these specifications to meet our document processing requirements. This is not a what is XML kind of class as I am assuming you already know XML but I want us to think about what is important about XML to the stylesheet writer. We will take a quick look at XPath in the context of these specifications and then look at how XSL vocabularies are related. Namespaces are an important aspect of XML processing and I am a big fan of XML namespaces. We will look at how XSLT is designed to successfully work with namespaces. And we will look at how we can associate style sheets with our XML documents. 
In Module 2, we look at basic concepts, terminology, and approaches to working with these technologies, as well as some examples to overview the functionality as a whole before getting into the details. We'll use both command line and browser-based invocation to compare and contrast these ways of initiating the transformation process. Before we look at transformation instructions, we get a solid understanding of the XPath data model used by XSLT to work with our XML documents, and the syntax used to access our documents described using the model. We'll underscore how we are dealing with information and not with markup, understanding how XML syntax is abstracted into nodes, and then how to navigate around the nodes themselves. We'll take a close look at trees of nodes and how we navigate in different directions around the nodes created from our XML syntax. We'll also look at the data types supported by an XSLT2 processor, including the nodes of the data model and the types inherited and derived from W3C schema. We'll talk about important aspects of creating our results, which will equip us for writing style sheets properly and efficiently. We'll review in this module the two instructions that govern some white space handling in our source trees, plus the very important functions regarding document context that help support the inherent processing model presented by the hierarchical nature of XML documents. In module 4, we begin looking at the transformation instructions that are used to control how we create our results. We'll talk about the processing model and how and where we can predict the behavior of the processor acting on our style sheets. We'll look at how the processing model works with the nodes presented in the data model. And we'll look in detail at the primary instructions used to pull and push information from our XML documents through our style sheet constructs. In Module 5, we'll look at the basics of structuring our style sheets and the controls we have available to us in the environment given to us by the vendors of the processor we are using. We'll look at the controls available on the document element, the controls that govern the result tree, and the serialization of our results as system resources. We'll review how our style sheets interact with the operator who invokes them. And we'll look at what properties of the system have been made available by the vendor. Module 6 has important content regarding the management and maintenance of our style sheets. We'll look at how we can modularize both the logical structure of our style sheets as well as the physical structure of our style sheets. It is in this module that we review the naming and calling of templates and the declarations of functions, variables, and parameterized variables. We'll review the differences between including and importing style sheets, and we'll look at the mechanisms by which we access extensions that have been made available by the vendor. In Module 7, we'll review process control and instructions creating specific nodes in the result. Sometimes we have to select between alternatives or reflect the positions and counts of nodes as part of our transformed result. It is in Module 7 that we learn about the difference between if and choose. We look at how to reflect the count of source trees using XSL number, how we create individual result tree nodes, and the differences between shallow and deep copies of nodes.